Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. It is time for, well, it's, yeah, another mailbag and things. I'm going to answer your questions. You're going to ask them. And I don't look at these beforehand. So, I mean, this, this could get crazy. Let's get started. I'm finally looking into buying my first cell phone. Yes, I've waited this long. I'm leaning towards an iPhone 4. Is this the best smartphone on the market? When would the best time to buy one be? Should I wait if there's going to be a hardware update? Really, people ask this every week. I have very mixed feelings about the iPhone 4. On one hand, it is an awesome little computer that you put in your pocket. On the other hand, it is a really, really shitty phone. So if you use your phone to make calls, don't buy an iPhone. If you don't use your phone to make calls, the iPhone is pretty sweet. Good? Everything, everything clear? Okay. My unique gait causes me to walk exclusively on the balls of my feet. My heels contacting the ground is uncomfortable, like an intense stretch, making traditional shoes unwieldy. Will the Five Fingers KSO shoes, this is the creepy toe shoes, uh, help enough to be worth their premium cost? I would say if you have some sort of orthopedic condition that requires you to have a novel gait, you should talk to your uh, foot or doctor professional rather than ask me this sort of question. So um, I am not a medical professional. Don't ask me that stuff. This is a question about our political leanings at Whiskey. Is Whiskey all liberal with a capital L? Uh, there are a lot of Obama posters floating around, I have noticed. Yes, there are. Um, I am not going to answer that question because I don't think it is germane to our coverage. Is Whiskey all liberal? Are you guys no. liberal? People shouted no, so there you go. I am. Some people shouted yes. Now they're fighting in the background. Look at what you've done. Hi, Will, and maybe Norm. I want to do a fresh install on my 2008 MacBook Pro, as I've, or, or actually it's just a MacBook, sorry about that, as I have not done one since I got it. Now here's the question. Is installing Leopard from the disk and then use the time machine considered a fresh install, or should I reinstall from scratch? Um, I mean, so fresh installs are tricky. On Windows, you kind of used to have to do them fairly regularly or else your machine would get really slow and bad. Uh, I, I've actually had a Windows 7 install that's been going since right after uh, it went gold. That's been really good. So, I, I mean, I don't know that it's necessary on Windows anymore. On the Mac side, when you do the Time Machine Restore, it's just going to dump your stuff back from the, from the backup. So you're essentially taking your old machine, cleaning it off, and then putting all the crap back on it again. So that probably is not the best move. Uh, what you can do is do the transfer or just back up all your applications, remembering to deactivate the stuff that requires deactivation, like uh, Adobe's uh, Creative Suite 4, including Photoshop, Premiere, all that stuff. Um, anything else that requires activation, there's a lot of small apps that I have on, on OS X that actually require activation. Uh, things like uh, microphone syncing programs and stuff like that, stuff I use for podcasting. So uh, remember to deactivate all your stuff before you do it. Uh, reinstall stuff. If you back up your home directory, you know, your profile directory, so it's usually your username, for me it's Will, then that's pretty much the stuff that you need to keep from install to install. And you might want to go through that library folder and kind of pick and choose what you, what you bring with you and what you don't. Hey Will, I have one simple question. Do download accelerators do anything? Should I use one? If so, any, are there any you recommend? That is three questions. Um, I've never used download accelerators. I find that you know, typically if you have a pretty good bandwidth, uh, pretty good bandwidth to the internet, you have a pretty good PC, uh, you don't gain a whole lot, and I think that they kind of make things a little bit janky sometimes. The exception is when you're using a specific service that you know, like uses Akamai or something like that, and then you will get a little bit uh, higher priority transfer. Uh, but then they're frequently doing some weird peer-to-peer -peer stuff, which I'm not a huge fan of uh, when I'm you know, paying for a service or something. So I don't use download accelerators, haven't actually tested them. Uh, I mean, maybe people in the comments can tell you if they've done some testing. I, I find that I don't like to have extra stuff between me and my files. Uh, I'm thinking about upgrading my PC because the graphics card I currently have is on its deathbed. I have to play on low settings so that it doesn't return an error. I'm thinking about an Intel slash NVIDIA combination. 
uh, can you recommend something mainly used for gaming? Uh, I mean, there's, there's, uh, if you're going to do a whole new PC, I mean, that $1,500 PC build we did is still super relevant. There hasn't been any uh, new CPU upgrades. The prices will have come down. Uh, look for the video that we did when we built Gary's PC. It's more or less the same thing. Basically, what I would recommend if you want to do an Intel NVIDIA is to do a P55 chipset motherboard, uh, whatever CPU you can afford, quad core preferably, and then uh, add like a GTX 460 or something like that is a great card. Likewise, the 5870 on the ATI side, 5850 are both good cards as well. And I think the 5830 is probably more comparable in price to the 460. So there you go. The next question is from Rudy R, A-R-R, -R. Rudy R, I guess is how you pronounce that. Uh, he says, what happened to those what's in your bag videos? I found those very interesting. Kind of we ran out of people with interesting bags. Uh, there's a couple other folks that we haven't talked to yet, so maybe we'll, uh, we'll get back into those. I, I always forget when we have people in the office to ask them to uh, you know, unfurl their bag and let us know what they're carrying. So uh, we'll have to get back in the habit of doing those. I think they're good videos too. I like to see what people carry on their, in their road kit when, they're, when they kind of have to take their whole electronic world with them. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely do more of them as the opportunity arises. Recently, I started playing Civilization V and my CPU is under the minimum specs that are stated on the Steam page. Uh, what's your experience with PC system requirements? Have they always been accurate, etc.? Um, <laughs> it's interesting because sometimes they're really crazy low, and you know your minimum specs give. Actually, you have a game that won't work on a PC with the minimum specs. Sometimes they're crazy high, and you can actually, like you did with Civ Five, kind of squeak under the minimum requirements and still have a an okay experience, but maybe not the best. So. On a game like Civ Five, probably you'll be able to draw everything and render everything, but you won't be able to do something crazy like play a, you know, a 24 civilization game or 24, 12 civilization game with a whole bunch of mini states and or city states and all that stuff, uh, because the turns will take three hours to run or something ridiculous like that. Um, traditionally, though, it's been the other way, where the minimum specs are really, really wildly optimistic, and the game that you're trying to play with those min specs absolutely will not work at that resolution. Uh, at any kind of real resolution on that machine. So uh, minimum specs are frequently not good. I like to check out a demo if there's one available. The other thing you can do is always check out message boards where people are talking about games. You know, when, there's, when you have a, a large traffic board like the one at giantbomb.com, uh, then there's a couple hundred people playing a game sometimes and you can get a good opinion of, of kind of how that'll run on different systems that are similar to yours uh, before you shell out 50 or 60 bucks for a game. Is there any chance that you will do an article about building a main cabinet? My girlfriend and I are planning on building one for our apartment, so any guidance would be helpful. Uh, we actually did one at Maximum PC. Alex, Alex Castle built one for us over there. I would love to do another main cabinet. It's probably been long enough that you know, there's some stuff that's changed and there's some new developments in that, in that area. I personally would love to build a cocktail cabinet so we can play kind of your Pac-Mans and Donkey Kongs and Galagas and all that stuff in the right vertical orientation with some place to rest your beer while playing the game. So uh, look for that, maybe, I don't want to say soon, but in the not too distant future. Think in the springtime. Hey Will, do you have any experience with Hackintoshes? If so, how'd it go? If not, what has kept you away? Uh, you know, I actually did a, a Hackintosh experiment prior to the Snow Leopard launch. So I guess with the Leopard, it was much easier to do the Hackintosh with that. You could basically find any kind of uh, Intel machine with the appropriate chipset and an NVIDIA graphics card. And it wasn't too hard, especially if you didn't want to get Wi-Fi working. Uh, since then, it's, uh, with the launch of Snow Leopard, you've had to do all sorts of kernel patching and stuff like that. It's a kind of big pain in the ass. Frankly, I don't think it's worth it anymore. I would just rather buy the iMac or a Mac Mini or something like that and pay the Apple tax if you want to run OS X, especially if you want to use it for any kind of work or, or like a real environment. If you just want something to kind of fuck around with, Hackintoshes are fine. I wouldn't use it for real work, though. My MacBook is going on four years old at this point. Uh, would you recommend an upgrade? The quick specs are a 2 GHz Core 2 Duo, a 2 GB DDR2, and an Intel GMA950 for graphics. I mean, always the thing on upgrades is, is the machine doing what you want it to do? Do you feel like it's still reliable? 
uh, I mean, are, are you hitting pain points? Are you, like, you trying to encode audio or video or something that's taking like four hours to run? Uh, when you have those, when you have a need to upgrade, upgrade, especially for desktop machines. Because, I mean, for all intents and purposes, there's not going to be a massive performance difference just using Word and browsing the web and stuff like that on your old machine and a brand new machine that just came out two weeks ago. Uh, if you're playing games, if you're encoding video, if you're coding audio, if you're doing a lot of photo manipulation, stuff like that can actually stress the machine and might make it worthwhile for an upgrade. Oh, this is a great question. Do you have any hot tips for people with big fingers that like to take things apart? Uh, I always have trouble getting my hands around inside computer cases and such, as well as trying to pick up tiny screws inside cases. And this is from Big Sess, who I guess his username makes sense. Um, I don't have particularly small hands. I don't definitely don't have massive Andre the Giant hands. Uh, the thing that I found is having the right tools helps a ton. Good pair of really long nose needle nose pliers, a pair of tweezers, some magnetic screwdrivers and non-magnetic magnetic screwdrivers. Uh, that weird visor thing that I used in the last round of MakerBot upgrades is great for letting you see what you're doing in a really fine, uh, giving you really fine control over what you're manipulating. Uh, basically, you know, get the right tools, get a screwdriver with a long handle that's not adjustable so you can get it down to tiny places and uh, bring lots of light. And I mean, that's what I would, that's what I would recommend. So this is a question about SSDs and hard drives. I'm having trouble deciding between an SSD and a normal hard disk. I'm currently using Vista, but have Windows 7 and will be upgrading when I get a new drive. I already have two one terabyte hard drives. What programs should I place on the SSD if I decide to buy one rather than the hard drive? Um, I, I, you know, I use a pair of Intel X80Ms in my machine at home. Basically, I have Windows installed there and everything that normally goes in program files except for the games folder just because of size limitations. Uh, that's worked really, really well for me. Windows boots like that. My applications load really quickly. My browser is always accessible. You know, if I want to get fancy and put a couple of games that I use frequently on the hard drive, I can do on the SSDs rather, I can do that. Uh, but mainly, I, anything that's huge, I put on the normal hard drives. Anything that's small, I put on the SSDs because the benefits are big. You also want to probably take your large data folders like your photos, videos, music, that kind of stuff and put it on a hard drive as well just because the, the cost per megabyte for the SSDs is so high. Um, I mean, the, the, the question is, are you willing to pay a fairly ridiculous premium when you're deciding whether to go with an SSD or a hard disk for uh, quicker access to your files, quicker loads, stuff like that? If you don't want to pay two or three times the price per gigabyte or five times or whatever it is, uh, you're probably better off sticking with a, with a big hard drive because they're still very fast. Um, but it is a, you know, traditionally upgrading from a smaller hard drive to a bigger hard drive gives you a relatively moderate performance increase. Upgrading from a hard disk to an SSD is like upgrading from a floppy disk to a hard drive. I mean, it is a substantial, huge performance increase, uh, especially in access time if you get a good SSD. Don't buy cheap SSDs, they're not worth it because you don't get a big performance gain. And the right performance in, uh, decrease is going to really, really hurt you in the end. Hmm. This is a question about t-shirts. I get a lot of questions about t-shirts. I think a lot of people here do. We, we tend to wear a lot of kind of funny t-shirts. Uh, the question is, what are your favorite websites for buying awesome shirts? I see a lot of Whiskey Media folks, yourself included, with awesome shirts. So I figured I'd see what your favorite sites ended up being. I apologize if this question has been asked already. Smiley face. Um, I shop for t-shirts all over the place. I buy t-shirts from Threadless, uh, from gamma-go.com. Uh, let's see, where else? From Urban, uh, um, I think it's Urban Design or something like that. Some outfit out of Atlanta. Uh, from Design by Humans I like. A giant Robot is a store down in San Francisco that has awesome t-shirts. I mean, basically, you know, the other thing I always do is I like to go to Comic-Con when I have the opportunity because there are a ton of just rad t-shirts available there. So uh, that's my t-shirt strategy. I'm sure everybody else has different ones. I think Jeff has Form Springs. So you should ask him what he likes to get on his t-shirts. And our last question today is, should I buy the iPad now or wait for the next release or maybe even a better competitor's product? This is from Rob Reindel. Um, I mean, we're six months into the iPad, so you know, the, the, my best guess is that we'll see a new 
second gen, second revision, whatever iPad in the spring, probably March, April time frame. So, I mean, you know, you, you, this what you buy now is going to be obsolete quicker than what you buy in March. With iPhone, iPad, all that stuff, really your best bet is to buy it on day one because you know in a year it's going to be outdated. Um, that said, there are some interesting competitors coming. The BlackBerry Playbook, which looks a little vapory right now, is scheduled to launch in the springtime, quarter two next year, around the same time as the iPad launch. And we should start seeing more Android tablets soon, although I'm a little skeptical about Android tablets. Even running Froyo, I think Gingerbread is going to be kind of the, the, and beyond probably, whatever the H release of Android will be, will be the more tablet-friendly releases for Android. I'm not real optimistic about uh, Froyo uh, and, and gingerbread tablets right now on Android. Just because I don't think, I mean, the, the Android is is not really super friendly on phones with Froyo even. Uh, with, with uh, you know, tablets, it's a whole different interface. You, the apps are going to have to scale up. It's going to be, I, th I think it could be a really bad experience. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I'll, I'm optimistic. I can't wait to see the Samsung tab, hopefully later uh, later this year. So that wraps it up for the mailbag this week. As always, if you have questions, you can post them at formspring.me slash tested. I answer as many as I can once a week on video. Maybe Norm will do one of these sometime. I mean, I, I like doing them. I like talking to you guys. But, but I think, uh, uh, you know, basically send Norm messages. Tell him you want him to do a mailbag. Uh, for Tested, I'm Will. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. Bye.